Hello, this is Professor Nassar. Thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to cover the general anatomy of the female reproductive system. So let's begin with this model that we have here, which shows a sagittal section of the female reproductive tract. And again, as we go through this, I will be sticking to the terms listed in your lab handout, unit four in this case, and I would suggest that you have that handy as well as your textbook or ebook open to the relevant section so that you can follow along. So here we see a sagittal view of the female reproductive tract, and there are a few features to keep in mind. First, let's put this part back on. From anterior to posterior, we have the following features. This is the anterior here. This is the posterior surface here. This is superior, inferior, just to get oriented. This structure, this organ is the bladder. This is the uterus, and this structure, and this structure is part of the descending colon turning into the sigmoid colon turning into the rectum. So keep these three organs in mind. Uh, it's important to keep this orientation, especially for uh, when you're doing imaging studies, to keep this orientation in mind. It will help you uh, keep track of uh, which side is anterior, which side is posterior, bladder, uterus, rectum. So let's go through the terms. Here we have the labia majora, and the second structure inside is called the labia minora. This structure is the clitoris, and the space basically in between the labia on one side and the labia on the other side is called the vestibule. It's hard to demonstrate here because the vestibule is just a space between the labia. Another term that's not listed in your lab handout, but should be, is the general name that we use to describe the female genitalia, which is called the vulva, V-U-L-V-A. And the vulva incorporates the labia majora, labia minora, the clitoris, the vestibule, and also the openings here for the uh, uterus and the, uh, uh, for the vagina and for the uh, urinary bladder, the urethra. So again, we have the labia majora here. This is usually basically just covered by, these are both epithelial tissue. This may have pubic hair associated with it. This has more glandular tissue associated with the uh, inside of it. The clitoris is basically the uh, uh, homologue to the penis. And then we have two openings that open into the vestibule. One opening here is called the external urethral orifice. And this connects to the urethra, which then connects back up to the urinary bladder. This is the vagina, and the opening of the vagina into the vestibule is called the external vaginal orifice. It's the end of the vagina where it connects outside the body to the external environment. Up here we have the uterus. If you follow the vaginal cavity straight up, you get to the next organ, which is the uterus. The uterus has three, the uterine wall has three layers associated with it. The outer wall is called, in your lab manual, ma lab manual is just called the serous layer or the outer layer. It's also known uh, sort of more formally as the perimetrium, but for some reason they don't list it as that in your lab guide. The middle layer, which is much thicker and made mostly up of smooth muscle, is the myometrium. And then the inner layer is called the endometrium, and as you will learn in lecture, uh, it consists of two sublayers, shown here. The regions of the uterus are as follows. The curved part here that sort of forms the most anterior pouch is called the fundus. This region here is the uh, body, the middle region of the uterus. And this region down here is known as the cervix, the region that connects to the vagina. And this part actually pokes a bit into the vaginal cavity. The opening for the cervix where the cervix opens into the vagina is called the external os, O-S. Then up here, if we just move, tilt this up a little bit so you can see a bit better, 
we have the following features. First is the fallopian tube, which goes by two other names. This is sometimes known as the uterine tube and also known as the oviduct. There are two of these, a left and a right. Here we only show you the right. These connect the ovaries, shown here, to the uterus. The oviduct has a few different named parts to it, which uh, we don't have you, uh, you don't, uh, which are not uh, listed in your lab manual. You don't need to know, except for the final end part. This region here is called the infundibulum, and these extensions that come off of the infundibulum are the ciliated finger-like processes that are called fimbriae. And the fimbriae basically capture the extruded oocyte that comes off of the ovary. So we have the uterine tube or oviduct or fallopian tube, the fimbriae, these finger-like processes shown here, and then the oviduct itself. Or sorry, the ovary itself. Then there are two ligaments that we'd like you to be familiar with. The first one is this one here that connects the ovary to the uterus. This is called the ovarian ligament. And the second one is this ligament here, which is called the round ligament. It connects the uterus to essentially the anterior body wall, but this ligament in fact goes through the body wall and then comes out the anterior side to then sort of anchor into a pad of fat. So this is the round ligament of the uterus. This is the ovarian ligament. Then there's one other model I wanna show you. It's a bit more three-dimensional. It looks something like this. Again, starting from the outside, this is the anterior, this is an inferior view. This is anterior, this is posterior. This is the anus. This is the vulva, the female genitalia. This is the labia majora, labia minora on the inside. And the space in between here is the, called the, the space in between here is called the vestibule. When we tilt this forward, again, we can see the three major internal uh, uh, pelvic organs, the bladder shown here, the uterus, this is the fundus, and then the descending colon, maybe sigmoid at this point, turning into the rectum. Coming off the uterus, we can see the oviducts. I'm sorry, coming off the uterus, we can see the ovarian ligament here that anchors the ovary to the uterus. There's one ovarian ligament, there's the other ovarian ligament in yellow. The structure here in pink are the oviducts or uterine tubes, ending here at the, or beginning here, depending on how you want to describe it. These are the fimbriae here and here. And then here's your ovary, one ovary, the other ovary. So the yellow is the ovarian ligament and here is the round ligament of the uterus as it comes through the body wall. This model also comes apart. Actually, before I take it apart in side view, let me take it apart this way. Again, for imaging studies, this is important to maintain this orientation or to understand this orientation. Again, this is anterior, this is posterior. This is, you'll see three lumens basically in a row. The first lumen is the lumen for the urethra, the second lumen is the lumen for the vaginal cavity, and the third lumen is the lumen for the rectum. On the other side, it basically looks like this to match them up. Here is the bladder and the lumen for the urethra. Here is the muscular wall surrounding the vagina and the vaginal cavity, and here is the uh, uh, muscularis externa that of, the, uh, of, the, of the colon. Or the rectum. Then when you open this up, it essentially looks like the same as the other model we were just looking at. Let me just put this together. Like so. So again, we have the labia majora, minora, clitoris, vestibule. 
external urethral orifice, urethra, urinary bladder. We have the external vaginal orifice, vagina, uterus, cervix, and I think that's it. The uh, perimetrium, the serous layer, the myometrium, this thick layer in the center here full of smooth muscle, and then the uh, uh, endometrium. And then the fundus, this region is the body, that region is the cervix. And this is all part of the uh, cervical canal here. This is the external loss. There's also an internal loss up here, but you don't need to worry about that. Okay, and then finally the ovarian ligament and the round ligament and the oviduct. Ovarian ligament, oviduct or uterine tube or fallopian tube, whichever term you want to use, for me at least is fine. And then the uh, round ligament of the uterus. Okay, gang, that's it for that. Thank you for joining me and good luck.